Hello and welcome back to the channel. We've been looking at upgrades for the motorhome. Now the review is something that we really, really needed to look at and that's the power within our motorhome, the system we use. So we've been contacted by a company, um, EcoWorthy, and they reached out to us and basically offered us to review a couple of their lithium batteries. So we are looking now to get the system changed within the motorhome. We were actually going to um, change maybe the solar and receiver, etc. But as we've been offered these batteries and the system we've got, we should be able to just do a one for one swap from the AGM battery that's in there. I'm not technical minded on all this. We are going to get them fitted professionally in a proper workshop, um, but I'm going to run through some of the specs of the batteries now. And hopefully um, by the end of it, we will have a running system with two lithium batteries fitted, um, drawing power from both. They do have um, the same running system, so they are 100 amp power, um, both of them. They have got the same charge rate, and I will confirm what that is in a minute when we get them out the box. Um, the only thing I have noticed is the boxes are a different size, so maybe the batteries, one battery is slightly bigger. Now the batteries they have sent me, they are not exactly the same, okay, but they have got the same capabilities, so they both run the same. One of them is non-Bluetooth and the other is Bluetooth. I will get them out of the box, we'll have a quick look at the box, see how they're packed, get them out of the box and we'll go through some of the specs. Hopefully when I do get them to the uh, workshop um, they can say that they can run together and that's the idea. We will take our AGM out, we will put these in and then we will basically review the batteries over a little bit of time and see how they perform. Let's get into it, let's have a look at the boxes, see what's in Inside. As you can see straight away, there's a size difference in boxes. Now I'm assuming the bigger box is going to be the Bluetooth box and maybe it's got more gubbins inside the battery for that capability. There you go. That's both of them now out of the box. You can see they're slightly different. Now this is the newer model. So this one is the one with the Bluetooth capabilities. And if we look at this one on the top there, you have well, a QR code for support, that's always a good thing. Hopefully not needed. Um, on off switch. Um, there is an instruction manual here and within there it does explain what all the lights and that mean. I'm hoping they can be run together. They reckon they can. We'll go through some of the specs on this. With the um, charge rate, um, because obviously that's an important thing, you need that to be the, pretty much identical, um, near enough, just so one's not getting unevenly charged and one don't get charged properly. So the charge rate itself is 14.6. Um, they're both 12.8 volts and they're both 100 amp hour batteries. And I believe, no they are, they are both life um, Po 4 lithium batteries. Yeah, so around 4,000 cycles for both. So yeah, it's just the dimensions really that are slightly different. So if we look at the non-Bluetooth, you're looking at 260 by 168 by 214 millimeters. This one actually weighs in at 10.5 kilograms. Now for the Bluetooth variant, the dimensions on this one, this measures at 300 by 175 by 220 millimeters and this weighs in at 10.6 kilograms so the weight pretty much on both of these is identical it's just slightly um, the sizes that have changed um, so we may have to adapt the um, case that they're going to sit in um, because it is under our bed, our island bed. We may have to adapt that slightly just to keep them secure uh, and everything like that. Now they do come, they both come with M8 um, screws and that's obviously where you're gonna put your cables. They've both got instruction manuals um, just so you know how to safely use the batteries. Uh, the only real difference then other than the size is the Bluetooth uh, version actually comes with this here um, and I believe that to be a Bluetooth, yeah it's a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module so that is what gives off the information. So if we have a quick look then there's a little cap there so I believe this actually gets plugged in there 
um, by the Infinet cable and then that's what will give off the information. The feel of them, they're quite sturdy. Um, this non-Bluetooth variant has carrying handles and I can lift it with one hand no problem which means I'll be able to lift the other one. However, the carrying handles are slightly different. They're sort of just indented into the side of this case. So far, these batteries look okay. Um, Price-wise, we'll put that in the description. Carry on watching. We're gonna get them fitted at the workshop, see how that goes, see if they can run in parallel for a start. So once it's all fitted to the motorhome, then we're tested out and see if I can be off grid for that little bit longer, still on 12 volt, um, but that for that little bit longer using these than I was with the original AGM. Now the AGM battery that's fitted now is a 110. These are 200 amp hours. Now I know with AGM batteries or any acid type battery that you only really use 50% of the uh, capacity of the battery. So hopefully I can use near enough the whole 200 amp hours of this. Carry on watching, let's get down to that workshop, let's see them fitted and then um, start using them. And we will give an honest review on this. And if there is any problems that we come across, um, we will obviously let everyone know, but we're not going to know that until they're in. So let's get down there. So we're now getting the batteries done and yeah, so as you've just seen there, that's where the old battery is. And I'm going to have the two new lithiums fitted into that spot there. Right, I've got the torch in here. So this situates under the bed and you can probably see now both batteries are now attached. One negative to one battery and the positive to the other battery. So it all seems good. So they're now fitted and they have actually been in now for about a month and a half. And uh, yeah, they're working absolutely great. Now these batteries haven't got a heater, um, a built-in heater anyway, like a little thermostat, you know, when it gets below a certain temperature, the batteries won't work. But what I found is because they're under the bed, they're in the van, you've got the heating on. I've never had an issue yet. Uh, even in the cold weather. So they're performing great in the cold weather. Now I'm back in the van. There's a couple of things I'm gonna show you. Um, but one thing to explain is it has got a battery management system on both batteries. I will drop it in so you can see. And it is basically like the brains and motherboard that sits on top of the battery cells. So it, the battery is protected if it drops too low in voltage. If the uh, temperature drops too low, it will cut the battery off. You can put it uh, in standby mode on the Bluetooth version. Yeah, the battery itself has got its own protection within each battery. So that will manage the battery cells for you, which you would need on setting it up on this system. Now, um, there is protection mode within the Sergeant unit, but um, having the protection mode on the batteries is a, is a good option as well. What I'm gonna do is turn on the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module and check the batteries just to see how much percentage is in the Bluetooth battery that I've got and what's getting drawn from that. Within our motorhome, like I said, the battery is situated under the bed. And if the battery has not done anything, it's in like a standby, it will shut off the Bluetooth module after 15 minutes. Uh, just a way of saving that little bit of power. So under our bed is here. We've got a bar island bed at the back. So if I can do this one handed, which I think I can, I can literally just flip the mattress up and then lift. And you've got another compartment here. All I do is stick my hand under here and I've sort of worked out now where the, the actual uh, button is. So I'll just push that button in, take my arm out. You should be able to see a blue flashing light. So that's telling me now that the battery Bluetooth system is activated. So when you go into the actual um, app itself, you're gonna have this. So you can see the Wi-Fi down the bottom, but I've set it up on Bluetooth. So you will have to connect the battery at the beginning. There is a QR code on the battery and um, you, it will find it anyway, and you can just connect. So if I tap on it, it is now connected. 
So we are at 73%, which isn't too bad at all. I've run the lights now um, for 24 hours and the, uh, the main hab lights um, just to get a bit of drainage on the battery. Over Christmas, I forgot to turn the power unit off or the control panel off and we've got wardrobe doors that are open and within there are lights, they stayed on. The um, TV was in standby mode and the Wi-Fi system was all on. So the van was pretty much live as if we was off grid or on the site. And the batteries did drain way below 50%. In the end, I was able to go onto the Sergeant remote control unit and able to shut down the control panel via, rem well, remotely. Um, but I forgot to use that at the time. And the batteries did run down below 50%. They were sitting around 30%. So I do know the batteries can run quite down and they charged up fine. On the app there then, it's pretty straightforward. You can see the actual voltage. So I've got the lights actually running now, front and rear of, of the cab. Um, and the power is saying is, is about 29.5 watts. So the two lights, it shows you the discharge. It will show you the charge as well, if it's charging and what rate it's charging at. It's telling you the capacity left in that one battery. So that's 73 amp hours. Obviously we've got two of them and it's got the remaining working time. So it's saying it can still run the lights on right now for another 32 and a half hours uh, within that one battery. And if we go into the to the data, it just gives you more information there. And if there is any faults, and I've had no warnings of faults at all. Like I say, the battery seems to be running okay. Both batteries together, um, they're working perfectly. So if we go up to the actual control panel. If I go into the system and the leisure battery now is sitting at 13 to 13.1 13 volts. And you can see it's got a drawer on it of four amps. So after fitting these batteries, um, with the solar, bear in mind you don't get much solar within the winter months. We've pretty much, my calculations worked out that we can easily do a week off-grid on our consumption. Now we don't use a lot of power, so we will have the lights on for a little bit in the evening. You have them on a little bit more in the winter. We would have the telly on for a couple of hours also. That's pretty much it. Um, because most of my stuff I will run off a gas, um, the gas cooker, the fridge I'll run off gas, uh, LPG. And the main reason is, is you can't run the fridge off of 12 volt unless the vehicle's running anyway. This system for us, for, for two people, is ideal and it should last us a good week. Now we were lasting around about three days with the AGM, so we pretty much doubled that and a bit more I reckon. I've now turned everything that I can physically on a 12 volt system on. So we have the lights in the back bedroom, we have the main lights in the bathroom shower area, we have the main lights within the front and we have the um, sort of main interior lights on as well. So that's all now running on this system. We've got the TV in the background so what I'm going to do now is actually put on the Max Air fans and let's put the second one on. They're both running at 60%. So let's ramp them up to 100%. So they're now running at 100%. So we've got the two Max Air fans, we've got the TV, the main lights in the rear, main lights in the front cab, interior main lights and bathroom and shower room all running along with the Wi-Fi unit. We are now drawing at 12.2 amps. So you can see there, it's now got quite a big load on the batteries and the battery is showing now at 12.6 and that's because it's pulling a big load. So what we do now, is we check the app again. Right, connect. Batteries, 72%. 
which is why I like the app because it's given me a true reading. I'm not getting scared of what the voltage is with the battery on the load. This gives me what the battery actually has got in there. and says it can now run for 11 hours. 84 watts on the power. We've got two max fans running at 100%. That's pretty good. I can keep this fan now like this for 11 hours if I want to. The main thing is we don't use it like this all the time. Um, and the power consumption that we use may change and may differ. I know now if I go on to a weekend rally Thursday to Monday that we are good for power. And of course I'll be topping it up with a little bit of solar anyway. I think these batteries are just going to change the way we do things that little bit more. We haven't got a plug in all the time and we can spend that little bit longer enjoying the different scenery off grid. So if you're looking for um, a LifePo4 battery system that's not going to cost you the earth. Um, get down into the description because in there there will be discount code for you to use. The prices are reasonable and so far I have no problems with the batteries at all. So look out for the next vlog. Me and Jody will catch you there and we'd like to say thanks again to everyone that subscribed and supports the channel. So until then, bye.